Thanks, Neil. And next, I'd like to call up Jonathan Kane, uh, who is the president of the Teal Foundation and board member of the CZ Institute, for some closing remarks for the day. Thank you, Patri, for that kind introduction. Your passion for liberty is infectious, and your vision for changing the world is inspiring. At the Teal Foundation, which was uh, founded and uh, established and is funded by Peter Teal, we work to uh, defend and promote freedom in all its forms, political, personal, and economic. We support innovative scientific research to make the future a radically better, more advanced place, uh, such as the work of Cynthia Kenyon, Breakout Labs, and the SENS Foundation. We champion organizations and individuals who expose human rights abuses and authoritarianism in all its guises, like the Committee to Track Journalists and the Oslo Freedom Forum. And we encourage groups that are exploring new ideas and new spaces where people can be less reliant on government and freedom can flourish, like the Singularity Institute and, of course, the Seasteading Institute. We also sponsor scholarship that seeks to identify and prevent the causes of violence and to identify and prevent the causes of aggression, which is the initiation of violence or the threat of violence. Given the relationship between violence and the establishment of political order and the desire of many of us here to establish new orders not based on coercion and violence, I'd like to share with you some of what we've learned. Our conscience tells us that it's wrong to initiate violence, but that defense is okay. As the philosopher René Girard has discovered, aggressors subvert this principle by persuading themselves that they are really the victims and that their violence is defensive. Sometimes they pretend it's not even violence. In short, everyone who commits a violent act considers it a defensive act and thus a justifiable one. The truth of this insight is confirmed by how powerfully we recoil at it. Surely the many unwarranted and cruel acts of aggression throughout history couldn't have been defensive. Surely even my own violence was justified. But nobody will admit to being an aggressor. Even history's bloodiest tyrants claim that they were uh, defending peace or the nation or the family. To attack another country meant warding off a worse danger. To kill a neighbor meant rooting out a traitor. To cooperate with a corrupt government meant preserving one's own life. Solzhenitsyn said, violence can only be concealed by a lie, and the lie can only be maintained by violence. Any man who has once proclaimed violence as his method is inevitably forced to take the lie as his principle. The right questions to ask about violence are not why, for whose sake, to what end, is it good or bad? The answers to those questions are, are only myths and lies. In truth, violence is mute. The only questions we can ask about violence are ones we must all ask ourselves. Will I use violence? Will I counsel violence? Will I give in to violence? Someone who courageously confronted a hardened system over co of coercion over many decades, Pope John Paul II, found words that point a way forward. We must follow the often narrow path between the cowardice which gives in to evil and the violence which, under the illusion of fighting evil, only makes it worse. It takes courage both to reject coercive systems and to refuse to use violence against them. That's why radical political experimentation, such as seasteading, is so important. Seasteading allows us to reject coercion, allows us to build societies not founded on violence. It will allow people to enjoy freedom beyond expectation. So on behalf of Peter Thiel and the entire Thiel Foundation, thank you so much for your support of seasteading and have a wonderful evening.